friends. Today was chart room episode 200 during our live session. So now we're going to be sharing this video for all our Patreon members. Today is all Patreon Saturday. So everybody will see this video. What we did is we looked, went through these cryptos from today. This is our recap portion of the section. And afterwards, we're going to read the word of God. Everything in this video is not financial investment or trade advice of any kind. Everything is just for entertainment, educational and comedic purposes only. I ate red crayons for breakfast, trading in the markets carries substantial risk, never trade more than you can afford to lose, and especially be aware against high leverage trading. We saw that Bitcoin had a strong parabolic to the top side, which we've been covering for the past few weeks. We saw that there should be a sword cut drawn. We also drew a parabolic on the 12 and six hour chart. Price broke above that parabolic. We were then waiting for it to come down. During that time, we also noted that there was a lot of supply in this area. And so you'll notice from some of my image, I said, I believe we're gonna get a retest here. The exception would be as if we can build above that flat parabolic. The problem is that we didn't build above the flat parabolic on the six and on the 12 hour price broke to the underside. Then even though it's coming back to the top side, we didn't really stop there on any chart, not the six hour, not the 12 hour, not the daily, not even the weekly. The weekly doesn't show that that parabolic support. So we wouldn't look anything farther than really the daily on there. And even then that daily is pushing it. This is a daily chart, but you can see the parabolic more clearly on the six and 12 hour chart. I'll say because there's too much supply in this area, price will likely dip one more time to the downside area between 63,000 and 59,000 area on Bitcoin. OK, so that means that we're probably going to get back into this blue area one more time. That is going to create a new watch line. OK, we talked about that supply, said we are looking to see the volume drying up in the blue area. So here having uh, lots of volume, but we do see incoming buying. So that means there's buying here. We want to see price come down here again with no demand. That would be great. Otherwise, we're looking to see some more ultra high volume uh, bars, uh, uh, down bars, followed by ultra high volume up bars. That would mean new buying new money coming in those sections. OK, but as it is, uh, we're looking most likely to go back down. Let me show you the watch line that you're waiting for Bitcoin to break. It's this white one. Get me above there, then we can talk. Otherwise, we're probably going to break below the smaller local watch line. But price can play in here. If you get some closes below there on the daily chart, most likely you're going back down into the blue section. That could happen probably within the week. It won't take long. I don't think you're going to play long down into this area. It would overall look like round action here and eventually a break to the top side with Bitcoin hitting new all time highs way past the 70 areas. I think Bitcoin's going to do fantastic. We also see on Bitcoin that there's a, a support on the in a pink, uh, pink like this weekly chart area. So it's very possible if we do get one large uh, push down even below that blue area, which is the that blue area, by the way, is a monthly uh, chart flat. It's on the monthly chart. You can see it's a very strong support. The Lord showed me a vision of it rounding on top of that line. So I think this is going to be bullish therefore. But even if we penetrated below that line, you still got backup support in pink. So there's a lot of support in this area, okay? So I'm not concerned so much with any of the local weaknesses. There is a parabolic to the upside in blue as well, but we have several weeks before we would phase into those weaknesses area. Most likely we're going to dip into the blue area and come up and that's gonna give us more time to play uh, before that parabolic, which means in the future, if we do hit some high prices, once we phase past, price can fall in quite sharply by the way, so we will be expecting some crash sometime in the future, but right now it's not on the radar because we're still up on the positive side of the parabolic. Okay, so we still got lots of time. Okay, and I put this too much supply in an area often equals a retest. So if there's too much supply in this area, look for them to retest that area to see if there's still a strong market. If all the supply is drained, then the markup mark up can continue. The watch line is primarily where you're going to see that onset. When we break above this watch line, it's on Donkey Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong or whatever your favorite Kong is. It could be Viet Kong. Okay, here we go. Now, oh, here's another image of the watch line on the bottom being broken. If we break to the bottom, we may come down to these areas where that blue sludge was. On the weekly chart for USDT.D, I highlighted again the sludge area. I said we're not going to get past this area unscathed. We're either going to reverse here or if I'm wrong, we're going to press through and go all the way down to that lower 3.14 area all the way down to the 2. Point, I think it's like 8 percent area. We're looking to get down there. That's going to be most likely the case of those two scenarios. So that's what I said in my original report that hasn't changed. 
we took the spike distance like we did and said, hey, this is the spike area. If price comes below here, look for us to spike and then look for us to challenge the underside now of this area. So them pushing, the professional money pushing this down into this area tells me they want higher Bitcoin prices. When this chart goes down, Bitcoin goes up. When this chart goes up, Bitcoin goes down. That's primarily what happens because of the manipulation and relationship between Tether dollars and Bitcoin dollars. Okay, now when we took the uh, key angle down here, we can see it's quite sharp and therefore our support should have been run along this line. We did have verification in the past. That support is, we also had several weeks worth us sitting on that support. This is not a support I take lightly. Okay, when we broke below that support, that's a big deal. When we try to come back up, we felt faced pressure on the underside of that support. We faced a lot of pressure. You, every time we came up, we tried to come back down. Now, we're trying to come back up. I'm not putting too much weight on us being on this side. There's too much reasons why I believe that we're still going down on USDT.D. Okay. And we can see that just because we're spiking up into this area this week, it hasn't changed. There's still so much pressure from the sludge area above for us to actually go down. I call it sludge, but it's just a lot of pressure. It's just a strong flat at this area is really what it is, which means I still believe we're getting down into that target zone 3.14 to 2.80. We would be looking at Bitcoin at being around 120,000 around those days, anywhere from 100 to 120,000 is what I calculated based on the distance. Okay, so that's where I can see prices heading towards with lots of evidence. It's very possible and natural for us to hit the spike area and come back up and challenge the underside of this area. But if this line is holding, that's that's gonna greatly accelerate it with uh, the, the process, okay? So that's what I can absolutely see. We looked at USDT.D. On a regular chart, it would show that there should be some support around, along this angle. And I would believe this line is correct, but even that would show some weaknesses starting to appear. However, we don't look on USDT on regular chart. We look at it on logarithmic view. And on a logarithmic view, we can actually see the move is actually slowing down. And we can see that there's still weaknesses that are starting to appear with us pressing to the underside of the larger parabolic. So if you guys are looking at USDT.D on a monthly chart, this is basically what's happening. We're seeing a lot of pressure on the underside. Look at the volume now on this past month. That's a big push to get us past that support area. A strong push to get us past that support on the parabolic. Uh, that's a real strong push. And now that we can we push down, we can actually rest on the underside. The volume doesn't have to be as strong, although we have a whole month left to go. If the volume is strong, that'd be even more means that we'd be going down even quicker which means Bitcoin would shoot up even. We also took a look at the distances from the final move that we've had that we calculated during certain dates and, and explained the differences between how logarithmic and regular works. We put more emphasis on this move here from these dates around 2020 uh, to, to 2023. We put a lot of weight on them. But if you look at it on logarithmic, you can see that the, proportionally the move was quite small compared to the moves back in the day okay so this is why we focus primarily on logarithmic because it tells us proportionally who actually is really in control okay and it's going to give us a lot of those moves all right so that's basically what we found on these charts we also uh drawing a straight angle uh we can see that weakness is first appeared here with supports along that line as well so this chart no matter how we slice it and dice it is all telling us a story that it should be going down all right. And if it's going down, that means Bitcoin has a big chance to go up. So I don't care too much about any of the major short term weaknesses I'm holding out because I believe I can see what's really happening. This the crypto markets are about to go up. What happens in Bitcoin usually affects a lot of the markets. OK, now we looked at a crypto called IOTX. We can see that target one was hit. Target two was hit. Target three is still on the board. There's still money on the board with the phantom being here around 55, 55 cents. There's a lots of still money, more move on the table for this crypto. So we still want to be bullish our IOTX. We looked at, and those are the prices. They're on our website. We'll be uploading these images on patreon.com along with this link within the day on uh, ARDR, we looked at this crypto, we identified that flats were one of the primary dominants working. In addition to that, we extracted the essence from this round action here and did the hidden battler calculations, calculated how we should see resistances 
and at those areas, the Hidden Battler 1 and 2. Hidden Battler 3 acted like support. That's very nice, but this whole area is still very bullish. ARD has two small bullish areas. There's one being here, and we just drew it like a fish with price breaking out of this downward resistance on top of the sword cut. Round action on a sword cut is fantastic for higher prices, and it looks like this one's barely getting started. In addition to that, if we take the foundational area and draw that foundational area out, we should have resistance around 11 cents, and we did. We came down back to sword cut, broke above. Now the next area to build above is this top green line. We broke above, sat down on it just recently. We are still close to this thing getting started. That is two large energies. I drew them as two fish. They're all both swimming in the same direction, telling the same story. And this is going to do, this crypto is going to do well. I believe this crypto is going to be doing very well. And this is called ARD. Okay, now and ARD, we're still close to the entrance. This is one I said in our meeting today, I said this is actually bull. We do request during our live meeting, if you guys are ever watching this clip or watching this part on YouTube or watching on, as a free member, uh, we do have free meetings once a month. Otherwise, we have meetings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday dives. We have word room on Sunday, which is free for everybody. In addition, we have chart and chat with, with Superfood and, and Marco El Camino. They meet on Tuesday nights. The link is through the VIP. If you guys are a VIP member, you get access to our exclusive VIP Telegram channel where all the people in our community are contributing charts and prophetic words and just a great place to be and hang out and make some friends so if you guys you guys will get that link in dive if you guys are a new dive member that link will be sent to you and, the, and then the moderators will take care from there superfood and el camino are senior moderators in that group along with ian man of god okay we do have another telegram community channel jason crypto and christ if you're looking for that link just shoot ian man ian yeah Ian and Ian Mail in the, the link. And there's a great community of people there. Here we go. Let's continue. They are the moderators for that group. Now, continuing with our recap for today, we can see this nice support that is happening along 11 cents. Those are the prices for ARD that I would like. I would like to get some prices as close to the bottom here as possible. The watch line is actually quite easy to draw. On the 12 hour chart, you can see it. It's about right here at this angle, which means you don't have much time for price to play around uh, and do something breaking out. That breakout price for today is 12 cents, but that's gonna be go low, going as low as 11.80 cents. Okay, 11.80. The current move up to its next resistance for ARD is around 163%. We can see it's close. It should be as close to 32 cents if it breaks above today. That number will go lower over time. And then we're looking at a crypto called One, which is Harmony One. This one has a lot of potential. We extracted all the, a new angle from this one, and we came at this from a new angle. <laughs> and then we drew the bottom support. That's going to be our key angle, our phantom on top with verification. So we were seeing, hey, this is drawn. This is correct. We extracted the new step ups from these areas. And we can see that our step ups, when we did draw them, let's see, where is it? In uh, yes, in dark gray, you can see this is where our next resistance should be somewhere above us. So we may actually break above this step up and come back down or just hit that step up and, and bounce around a little bit. But ultimately, this is our move. And uh, we're looking to get up and take some profit at the red area at the end of it all. Okay, the red area. This is going to, this is doing well. The first move up from that area was around 11,000%, a little over 11,000%. And the move that's left on the table right now, uh, this move is up to around $1. So this move up to $1 is very good. Now I do have an old areas of certain areas of concern. I have step ups at uh, 14 cents. And then again, that step up at 5 cents, which where we're expecting a short move up to that area first. But primarily the major health has already came into this crypto. We had a strong parabolic on the yellow, on this yellow down bar with round structure on top of that parabolic. That was good. And then we broke above an old sword cut that also held us down. That sword cut was based on that original channel back here in as the white here and the white here on bottom. So this is gonna be our key angle on top, our phantom on the bottom, and our sword cut was drawn here where price rejected a few times 
actually now we're on top of that sword cut so the power is broken it's acting like a support so this is very good in addition to it being a support there's a descent here that's going to be a new key angle we place the key angle up here with verification there's verification here and here it's telling us we're doing this correct now we're sitting above this should be the best prices for support therefore i want to buy here because this is structure in a healthy area this is what i want to buy i want to buy at these prices one and i want to get out at the top based on the new phantom and extraction of the step ups tell us that this channel is correct it's telling us this is how we want to be moving and the move up to here is quite a bit of percent i don't, I don't know if i took a screenshot of that percent but we do have some targets along the way and we did targeting system they just so happen to overlap the step up so the primary area is 048 cents not exactly five but 048 cents which means we break above 048 we didn't just hit our target but we broke above that's going to be a very good thing so move up from current price 02 to 048 there's about 100 percent on the board just right there and then the next area is a, a, a step up that overlaps target number two. So in the area that where they primarily overlap is 12 cents. So a move from four to 12 cents, that's gonna be what? 200% gain from here to there. That's gonna be really good. And then finally got 25%, a 25 cent step target. But these targets, when they overlap our lines on our map, start telling us a, a really strong story. And I'm excited about Harmony 1 because it, these two targets overlap our two step ups. They're just telling us we're doing it right. Over and over again, the charts start val validating the map is correct. And also, Lisa told us that this has been added to the ISO registry. This is that's bullish. Okay, I put bullish. Okay, it's not just bullish; it's bullish, which is bulls uh, who are foreigners and don't speak correct English. They it's at 26 area ultimate targets ultimate targets are at one dollar resistance. Short term targets at four, twelve, and twenty five. Okay, so that's one. We looked at T fuel. Uh, we can see that was a draining of, of the supply down in the support areas here. This was really bullish for us down in here. We can actually see we're still in an uptrend with around 8,300% left to go up to $7.61 plus, which means that number is only going to get higher as time goes on. This is a monthly chart. This is going to take a longer time, but we can see lots of potential here. And there should be resistance around where the step up is. We drew this resistance because... And, and because of where the step up should be and price is sitting right there on that monthly chart. So feeling some pressure, we may or may not move at this time, but there's a lot of support. There's a lot of pressure on this down on, along this gray line. So we would be looking eventually for us to break above. Now the move from the first move was 24,000. The next, the next logical move is up to $7.61 areas in the future based on this monthly chart and that was a 24,000 percent move in the past we're looking at a very high strong potential for t fuel current price zero nine cents and that's on the monthly chart now we need to be able to clear this gray area before we start getting into that that next zone but we can see that the first health was on the foundational area line, which was in red. So we drew this with strong verification, taking these two areas, these two cores, we draw them straight. There should be resistance here. There should be resistance here. There was, and finally the health came in the market and that's when the market started moving, which means we're not so far off some of the major moves that are just getting started in T fuel. You're not, you haven't missed the bus so far. You haven't really missed the bus. Now I did see some short term selling happening on the weekly chart. So there is some selling that is happening, but because of that, I wrote this, even though there is not, there's some profit taking above in the gray area, the, at the step up near 10 cents, there's a very low supply on the downside during the last test near March 20th. So now down March 20th, there was very low supply to the downside. So even though there's a lot of profit taking here, I don't expect them to, if they bring it down here to zero six cents, I don't expect it to stay long down here before we come back up because there's not really a market down here. Okay. I don't think that we're actually going to break to the low side if i have this right now i'm a little leery at buying t fuel today because we're squeezing up into this area and i don't like to squeeze and get to the downside without lots of with some weaknesses in the background i want to make sure that we can clear this gray area and i'll buy i don't mind paying that higher price above the gray area for safety for security i don't like just throwing money at a crypto for no reason but if we phase past here i want to try buying close as i can to zero six
Okay, so if we phase through that support in dotted line, I want to buy at 06. That would be good prices to have. But there is a lot of supply in here, so look for them to possibly test it. Possibly. So right now it's a little conflicted. I would therefore still want to stay bullish. If I have this, I'm not going to dump all my holdings, even though there's certain resistance here, but it's very possible I might be able to get some more holdings at 0 06. Okay. Normally I would take profit at this point, but I want to stay hopeful due to this fact. This means there's not a strong incentive or reason to break the lower support. Therefore, I would not I would want to wait to sell my or exit my holdings until I have confirmation that I'm underneath the watch line on the bottom or the support line in white, okay, which is the same line. If so, I would be looking for a price to fall towards the 06 or 063, okay? So I don't really want to sell unless I get below this line on the daily charts, okay? Then I'll buy back here. That's how I would navigate that if I was you or if I was trading. But this is never financial or investment or trading device of any kind. This is just comedic purposes, okay? Not to be taken seriously at all. Meta, which is the brother or sister of T Fuel, is looking similar in a stronger area. Now we were we had to do a little more calculations to find that this is the correct phantom we should be actually using. We had to use our first step up technique, which is going to be demonstrated more in Sword Method 6.0 when the filmings for that began. You guys can take advantage of that. You want to watch the video Sword Method Lessons. 1 through 10 from Sword Method 5.0. They're available on our website. Just go to the search bar uh, on patreon.com slash jsong underscore 7 and type in lessons and it's going to pull up the page for that. On Theta, we can see that Theta has broken above its gray line. And this is the difference between T Fuel and Theta. Where T Fuel has a gray line above it, Theta already broke above its gray line, which is a step up. They're the same. It's a step up. This was a little harder to find and extract, but we can see that, yes, this should have been the area where it breaks above. In addition, it also overlapped target number two, one, which target number one we already had on our chart. So if you guys were trading it, that's where you would take some profit and price hit target number one came down. Now we're breaking above and sitting on top of target number one. This is a monthly chart. Now we need to really properly sit down here so you may see a boring rest of the month, but it doesn't need to sit down exactly on the monthly chart, it already did on the weekly chart. But this is a good sign that you're headed in the right direction even on the monthly charts. Here's a look at that weekly chart. We can already see we broke above on the weekly, so we fulfilled what we needed to. And in fact, we sitting on top of this line. Where they meet together, that's where they meet, okay? So I'm excited about Theta because Theta is in a good place. Now the problem with Theta is it has a watch line that needs to be broken as well. So we may not be expecting any action today, maybe even tomorrow. We need to see when that watch line will be broken. But the move up to target number two is 79%. So target number two at 20, it's going to be at $4.22 to $4.73. To the low side, 22 cents. Okay. Then there will be another trade or should be another trade from that area up to the next territory, $10. But even just as it is, the move up to, to target number two is 79%. That's not so bad, right? Okay. It may look something like this with the ultimate target being within its trend, $185. $185 equals 6,747%. Some of these cryptos are going to do really well, guys. Some of these cryptos are going to do really well. And uh, you're going to see some of them have big moves. And for people who are saying it can't happen, just look at it. It happened last time. A very large percentage. It's the same distance of percentage on the board. If That's actually less percentage. We saw these are the type of moves that you that is probably going to be the case. Okay, 6,007%. Now, here's the watch line for Theta. Theta... We can draw it from here to here. It's really quite simple and with verification. See these little Vs? That means I do verification. We draw them from the circles to the circles, but those little Vs are the verification. You draw that line. When price is building above that line, you're ready to move. Not until then. Until then, you, you could be playing around here, and we can play all the way to May 7th. So you may not expect a big move in March. We actually may just still be sitting right there. It's possible. But when it's time, I'll be keeping my eye on Theta, and I think you should too. Okay. If you guys want to request Theta more often, you guys can uh, come to our website and see all the images, recreate our maps. Otherwise, just take screenshots from my video. You can do that. But 
there will be some good opportunities, and I hope we get to find some of these moves together. Okay, Monday, Wednesday, Saturdays, yes, $18 and up is the dive tier where you guys can get invited to our next meeting on Monday and get all the notifications. Okay. By the way, the move up to target number two is 90. Next, we looked at a crypto called Aurora, Princess Aurora. We can see the last sword cut was moved up to 12 cents to 10, to, uh, 12 10 to 10 98. And uh, this one, we had a hard time trying to find where the support was. We actually had to extract our mixed tiger calculation. Using our mixed tiger calculation, we could see indeed there should have been support here. And then from there, we knew we could trust the support a little bit more. After the support, we can see that there was a no demand at the bottom of the support when they chested the, the support a second time. That There was new money coming in, new buying coming in based on these back-to-back -back candles. And when we finally did come back to these areas, we did on no demand, which means the markup could continue. So we were looking for mark prices to go up somewhere back here. And after that, we have to find uh, a new bottom. So what we did is this is on a weekly chart. We now zoomed in to this area a little bit further and we can see some more stuff going on. Oh, where's it at? Here's a daily chart look at Aurora. Okay, here's a daily chart look. When we drew these two tops from here to here, that's gonna be our key angle. Bringing it down to the bottom gives us verification. This tells us we're doing it correct. If we did the step ups, they're all where they should be, okay? Resistance. So all of this is just confirming more and more that we, our analysis is correct. When that means there's some short-term weaknesses that have entered into Aurora, which means we would be looking at primarily a new flat a new support in these areas for Aurora. So this is going to be some more cause for concern with Aurora. We're looking to see, to find where the new support is at. Now, <clears throat> going again into this top, here's the parabolic. Therefore, there should be a sword cut about right here. We already rounded into the sword cut and already did a big move. So that sword cut is still at the bottom around 27 cents and it intersects the bottom uh, a phantom angle somewhere about that 27 cent range now because of the short-term weaknesses and we're still underneath the watch line we're looking therefore for prices to come down a little bit further i drew an arrow saying hey we're probably going to go down uh, and bounce around these areas even though we could draw an arrow on top we can draw all those options price could move ultimately i believe we're actually going down so on our charts you'll often see i draw multiple arrows to give you all the options but if there's one that I'm more predominantly, if I only draw one arrow, it means it's probably pr predominantly what we're looking at. And we need to watch those behaviors. So therefore, we cannot expect this crypto to go up until you break this watch line. We need to be on the top side of here. I don't want to buy it until I have a reason to buy it or a pr good price to buy it at. And then even then, I want to wait for the watch line to be broken before I really buy so if you're trying to get the best prices, it's probably closer to 27 cents. Current price is being 33 cents right now, but you won't move until we break above the watch line in either case, okay? After putting on targeting system, we have targets at $6, which means you may see this crypto move from 32 cents to, or 33 cents or even 27 cents up to $6.83 in the high, $4.71 to the low, okay? We looked at Brent. Uh, uh, we looked at Brett the other day. We still didn't really see too much in the candles, but we can see that price did find some, some support on the daily chart at 4.9 at the flat, and the flat is still working. And we did highlight that we should be seeing flats, and uh, it's very nice that just a few days ago, price did come to a flat. Okay. We looked at Volt. Volt is still within this cone shape. There was a, uh, a parabolic on the smaller time frames that did not hold. Uh, or sorry, that price still couldn't break above. It's still just resistance, right? Until price breaks above there, there's not really a support on Volt. However, for Volt, we did see some very interesting things. The two main things we see is that flats are indeed at work. This is a weekly chart. Flats are at work, which means that we're when you see flats on one part of the chart, you start looking at flats everywhere on that same chart. So here's two flats. The third flat would be approximately in this area, around six zeros, five one. Okay, so this is very likely we're going to find some flat support sometime soon. The problem is we spiked so far on the top side before before coming up, before coming back down. Now that we're here, it's very possible we're going to spike to the low side the same way. Okay, 
In the same way that we did that before, we're probably going to do that. Now, on the weekly chart, I also drew a parabolic with some short-term weaknesses entering on the weekly chart. So it's very possible, even though there's some support here, we may spike just by virtue of the new incoming shorter term weakness. But if we do find that support at the flat, ultimately it would look like a move really unexpected for a lot of people, which means we actually may see prices spike down to the lower areas here as a support because of the distance up here. It's very possible that could be the case. Okay, now we are looking to see prices come down into the support on ultra high volume. We have that. The next bar being a down bar closing near the high in the context of support tells me it's very possible that this is new money coming in. The confirmation is going to be an up bar on this day. This day needs to close. It's got, we got five hours left from the current filming right now. We got five hours left. It needs to close just like this. If it does, that's a good sign that the weekly chart is also going to close in that area, which means the candle is going to close right on that flat support, which is very positive for Vol. All right. It's very positive. Even if we spike down in, it means the overall health is still in this market, which means we're probably going to go up support in blue. And then here's another support. So even if we spike down, we're probably going to go up, which means you may be able to scoop up some really juicy prices on the low side. Okay, really juicy prices on the low side. Now, you got two watch lines on this one that we drew uh, for you. And they're somewhere about right here. That means if you break above here, you're probably only going to go up to here and then come back down. But during the week, we're going to find out what's going to happen. Now, primarily Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when that weekly chart candle will close. And I'm going to be paying attention to that. And we can revisit this chart on Monday and see how well it did. Otherwise, you can draw the charts yourself on your own lines and see how well they do. But ultimately, uh, it's going to be a very interesting experience for all of us. It's nice because it's complicated because on the daily chart, you got this nice parabolic, right? Look at this parabolic and you can say, oh yeah, short term weakness. We should be going down. N uh -uh, not so fast, my friends, not so fast. Remember that parabolic we showed you on the month, on the weekly chart, it's like a cone shape. The bottom is actually this blue support. Is it possible we're spiked down into this area? Absolutely. Even if we stop here, we can spike, but it's not going to change the story. Volt is going up. Okay, Volt is going to go up. Also, Triple J prophesied about some camel humps. She saw that she saw three camel humps, and I was like, wow, well, we got three big moves. One, two, three. It's very possible this is the last camel hump down, and then it's going to go up. Okay, so this is what I wrote. Short term weakness has entered Volt on the daily and weekly chart based on the parabolic yellow line. However, this crypto has a history of flat support on the weekly charts. It is also sitting on the blue flat on the weekly chart today with one day and seven hours left until the close. This should be strong determining factor about what will happen next with Volt. It is possible we'll see a strong dip yet hold the support on the weekly. The volume shows potential buying coming in at the support on the down bar. This will be confirmed if the next candle in the next seven hours does or closes exactly exactly like how it looks now in this image. I'm reluctant to sell Volt, but I would also not buy until the watch lines are broken. Two watch lines have already been drawn now. So if I have my Volt, which I do have some Volt, I don't really want to sell. Even though I may be going down low, I'm very optimistic because this is the whole buy area anyway on the weekly chart. If I close tomorrow at that line, I know I'm doing right. Even if price spikes down below, I'm still correct. This is, what, this is how I would think if this situation is. However, we need to get above these two watch lines before we're going anywhere. So if you want to be safe, just wait. Don't do anything with Volt. Buy some here above the line or try to get some of the low prices at the zero, zero, the one, two, three, four, five, six, three, two area. Okay, that three, two is where also a parabolic comes down and intercepts that area. It's also closer to the lower flat. It's about the distance of the spike. And I closed a, I made a picture of this. Here it is the picture. Spike to the top side. Possible spike area to the low side, 33 to 34. It just happens to be in that area where Triple J was in the meeting today prophesying about that number being a possible support. She was hearing that number. Three camels down and then a move up. This is a very interesting thing. Now, to see Volt go from 50 to 30 would be a big loss. 
if you guys are intraday trading, which are based on this in inside information, some of you may want to exit some vault and see if we can get those prices here. If that's you, that's great. If you want to just buy only at those prices, that's great. If you just want to sleep, that's fine too, because I believe ultimately vault is going up. But tomorrow will be a good thing. Now, if they drive it down there and you have some low order set, hey, praise God. But that's going to be some intraday type stuff, and it's not recommended for everybody. Ultimately, I believe Volt's going to do well. If you just want to have some new incoming money with some orders there, that might be interesting and fun. I can't tell you what I'm going to do, but, I, but I'm thinking this is might, uh, mighty interesting for me. I'll let you pray about all things. All right. She also said this, Lord Jehovah, speak into my ears. Sheba is having birth pains and getting ready to birth wealth for many what was that she yeah okay so we're going to talk about shiba in just a few moments we'll talk about shiba in just a minute we looked at a crypto called pendle and pendle's in an upward parabolic uh it had a strong flat uh about right here in pink uh it didn't show on the i didn't i don't know if i got a good picture but that would have been the, a good entry for us right there the next entry would have been on top of the parabolic this would have been the phantom area this would have been the next area as we build support in here this was a weekly chart so re this is not get rich quick i want to take that thought out of your mind <laughs> this is build wealth slow and strategic right here's several weeks of us building on here before the move happens Okay, and then where are we going? If we take the foundational area as a key angle and bring it on top of this energy center here at the core, back here in the past, we got verification. Now look, this is where we're at. We're sitting at a top right now. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to get out of this crypto. It may have some short-term weaknesses, but on the weekly chart, there's some health coming in. So there's still a move. When we did a projection based on a mid phantom transformation technique, which we're going to explain more again in sword method 6.0, anybody in the live me meetings, you get those, uh, you get that kind of tutorials, especially on Wednesday, we do tutorial days on Wednesdays. Um, so it means if you're new, you can come on a Wednesday and just start, you'll see me go really slow over all of these techniques. 247% left from that top up to that mid phantom projection where the new phantom would be exit price $27, 2737. Get above there and you got another trade going on. Possible, possible another trade. We saw on the weekly chart, massive amount of incoming money after the parabolic down code, actually during the parabolic down move. So during the parabolic, we broke above this area and price was building a new support. Massive amount was coming in. And where's the exit? Where are they exiting that money? When did they get out of the market? To the tune of $40 million. Here's up $60 million. Here uh, on average $20 million. Now we're less than a million dollars. So they got in all at the bottom. Price has been moving up high. When did they exit? They didn't exit. I put this. Professional money entered the market on the weekly chart at the lows. But proportionally, where did they exit? They did not is the answer. They are still in the game. And if they're still in the game, the professional big money still in the game, you should be too. Unless you have a real reason to get out. There is a shorter term parabolic right here on the daily chart that would denote when weakness would enter. If price is phasing past here, you may see some short term weaknesses, then you can intraday trade it. Um, but otherwise, I want to wait to buy it because we're at a top. I want to get above this white line above that $7.70 area. Get me above there, then I can take the trade up to the final $27. That's a move from about seven, eight bucks to $27. That might be good if you get it, but otherwise it's dangerous to just buy at a top. We don't want to buy at a top. You want to buy low, sell high. You need to have a reason to get in. So unless you're at one of those support areas, you don't have any reason to trade this trade. It could be dangerous. If I'm holding, I may want to just hold for those longer term targets. Otherwise, it's not my cup of tea too much. I said this crypto is very similar to a crypto called XOR. I can't speak for the XOR on other exchanges, but on Gate.io, a move up to the recovery for XOR is 1,600% up to that recovery line, which is going to be where the resistance line is on the higher time frames. That move is very high, and that move came after the fact where we had a large parabolic down move this is a weekly chart so many weeks this crypto was once trading at 980 dollars it's currently at 007 with massive amount of money coming in to the tune of 100 million dollars coming in on gate io this a lot of millions coming in after we broke out into health and we're still near the bottom the move hasn't really started. This is professional money accumulating. They'll accumulate millions in a slow move and then you'll see price go up because the money has to come in over time. 
it comes in over time because it's in low orders. So they drain up the supply many times in, in smaller points of health. So I put massive incoming money on the weekly charts. This is similar to Pendo. And I showed you the that strong parabolic, okay, on the downside, and the money comes in the market. They didn't get out, so you shouldn't be getting out. And this, it'll be the same with XOR. That big strong money coming into XOR, you'll look for you'll look for them to get out somewhere in the future with lots of volume that's similar. You'll see price probably mushroom over, you'll see all these weaknesses, but right now all we are seeing on XOR is health. Okay, we talked about XOR, it looks there's three humps. We saw we can see on XOR the weekly chart support is still holding and we're now coming to a support. Now the last time we talked about support, we talked about this support up here. Price sat down on it. But there was too much supply, they actually brought it down. They said, we're not ready to bring it up to the support. Even though we tried to sit on it, it failed. So now it's coming down to the original support. However, if price ever challenges that 12 cent number again, I shrunk it just to bring emphasis to this. If it ever gets that 12 cent area again along that line, it's not going to stop here and pay the tax because it already paid the tax. It came up with a strong push and sat down on. It's not scared of this line so much anymore. Okay. Health entered this market when we first came past this parabolic. Health entered again on top of the sword cut. Price entered again on this sword cut down here. This sword cut down here. There was entries all over this thing. The last entry was up here, but this one was a failed entry. The next entry will should be around this blue support, which you're almost down there. So look for XOR to come down a little bit longer. This is not an intraday trading crypto. If you look at the daily chart, you can see all these spikes. Choo, 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 choo. This is not a crypto that is for intraday trading for me. Okay, it has to be a strong range trading crypto for me to consider that. This is very messy. This is a crypto that I'm getting for longer term holding. Okay, so because I see the health in here, this is the type that I'm holding for longer term. Okay, now <clears throat> we, we cl finally close with Shiba. This is a support we've had for almost two years or over a year we've had this support it's about on two eight we've known where we to look for this support if we ever came into that era territory about two months ago i told you guys hey it was about a month and a half ago here back in march the beginning of march we are going to be pushing up to this resistance we pushed above the resistance sat on it but we still were on high volume on the daily chart there was no demand in certain areas so we're having reason to come up to these areas. But on the weekly chart, I can tell you, now there's no demand on the weekly as well. So on the daily chart, seeing that no demand for shorter term trades, now we can see the larger no demand candle on a down bar sitting exactly where it's supposed to be, which means there is support here. Now it's not saying you're not gonna spike down into the 23 areas, but overall the 28 areas, the closest you can get to a good price for Shiba. So I don't mind seeing it go down to 23 or even these lower supports because I already know I'm getting some of the best prices. This is not an intraday chart that I want to trade intraday. This is a crypto that I want to trade because I'm buying it because I believe it's gonna have a strong breakout. Shiba had a strong push past this tiger support. This is a calculation number that I don't think anyone has. Uh, we're in, in our in our community where we're I'm the only person I know who has this type this support on here based on our mixed tiger calculation. It's based on our mixed tiger calculation. And here is it's a, that 28 27 number. It's going down every week, but it was at 28 when we first discovered it. Now it's like 20 27 something. 27.3 is where price is at right now. You guys just see me have a big highlighter at that area. Or I scribble with orange. So you guys know it's a mixed tiger calculation where it should be. And this has been holding. I am very excited about Shiba. I am very excited about Shiba. On the daily chart, that line doesn't look like it's holding at all. But it is on the weekly chart. Which means Sunday night at 8 p.m. You're probably going to see Shiba again looking just like this in this exact area. If you don't see it, that means maybe some more shorter term moves are on set. But this was one of the crypt cryptos that we talked that Triple J was prophesying about the camel humps. And we can see also three uh, three humps possibly coming in. Now, here's one. Here's two. This is just on the daily chart. It's very possible we're going to get one more move down here because she was she sensing high in her spirit that we're going to be going down back to that 23 number. That number 23 was one of our lows that we hit on the daily chart and as well within the region, which means I don't expect to hit it tomorrow. 
if we hit it now, it's probably just going to be a spike. Otherwise, we're going to be hitting it sometime Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something like that, later during the week. But it's very possible we may come up one more time. Now, here's the easy watch line. You're not expecting Shiba to move. Not until you break this watch line. It's not rocket science. Okay. We are waiting for Shiba to break this line. Now, do we have that number? Yeah, you've all had it because you can see the foundational watch line here. Therefore, when prices was hitting here, that was verification. And when we came up here, that was verification too. You've all had this number. Anybody who's watching our chart or chart room, if you guys are dive tier members or even report tier members, you're going to see the images for this. You just need to clear this area on daily charts and you're good. That's basically, it's not even on the weekly chart. Clear this on the daily chart and you should be moving. Until then, all of this is still the accumulation zone. I've been trying to tell people, as close as you can get to this orange line, that's where you're gonna buy. Sometimes you can get below, sometimes above, but overall, it's still holding exactly where it should. Okay, do you guys see that? So watch that and you now know when Shiba's gonna move. When it moves, it's gonna move. But I have a bag here at these prices. I think you should have a bag there, but that's just for me, okay? I'm still looking primarily at the, not this on the daily chart, but the weekly chart where the support is still in. I am excited about that. I am watching this with great interest, the watch line. When price breaks the watch line, this crypto should take off. And I uh, put this April 6th, but you guys already know that watch line has been established since we started talking about it. The next resistances should get us towards this white area at one, two, three, four, eight, five. There is a target here of five, three, but ultimately I don't believe that the mouse of amount of money that's coming into this crypto at this support is not is just gonna get us only a measly 38% up to the target number two. No, I think you're gonna blow past target number two because we did last time. We blew past that, that target number one, we just blew right past it. So I think we're gonna blow past it and get up to these areas around eight, five. Okay, then build up there. That's going to be another time to get in, but that's going to be a higher price that you're going to be having Shiba at. And once it's up there, um, I think you're going to get closer to some of the prophetic numbers that we have on Shiba, which are closer to 0020, 00023, and 000314, which just means we're getting ready to break a penny when we hit that one. Okay, now all of these numbers based on the pattern that i can see a simple one two three pattern we take the energy from here to here and bring it down to the support it gives us a distance which is somewhere above here which means no matter how i slice it and dice it once we clear this number we clear the whole channel which means we're most likely going to be going up to these areas which is in coinciding with some of the prophetic words about us doing very well and getting ready to hit some high numbers in these seasons like one of the things we heard prophetically it would lose a zero in this season how do i see that in the data i absolutely can see it especially if we get into above this white line that's above the whole channel okay that's where the channel is this is our key angle this is our phantom angle anything above there i don't care if we come back down after that that's great we want to come down so we can get another bag draw another watch line and then take the next trade but I'm very excited. And that's all we had for today's video. We had for our recaps. Everybody who joined us today, thank you very much. We are going to take this time to read the word of God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, last time we talked about patience. Today, we're going to continue where we left off. If I speak in the tongues of men, and the tongues of angels, and I have not love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, can understand mysteries and knowledge, and I have all faith that can move mountains, but I don't have any love, I am nothing. If I give all that I have away, if I deliver my body to be burned, it's a sacrifice. But I have not love. I gain nothing. Love is patient. And love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. 
it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Let's stop there for a few moments. We talked about our spouses last time. We talked about being patient with our loved ones. We also talked about the buttons that we press. And when I was young, I used to say, man, my dad has a lot of buttons that you can press. But as I got older, I realized I had buttons that I could be that could be pressed too. I went through a severe traumatic event. When I was in my 30s, I went through a real traumatic event. And when I went through that event, I realized some things in me started breaking that weren't that I didn't know needed to be healed. Some things just were never the same. Certain parts of my personality ended up changing during those times. And I noticed that something new happened for the first time in my life. And for the first time in my life, I began to understand other people with high blood pressure or things like that. I used to say, why do these people get angry all the time? Why do they just, why does this happen? Why do they have, why are they irritable? And that's because they have sensitivities to issues you may not expect or know about. And there's healings and restorations that need to happen in different areas of their life. But those things have to be overcome. And you can't judge them for that. You can pray for them. You can love them. But now they actually have to deal with issues that you may never have to deal with. Let me give you an example. A dog once was kicked really badly when he was a puppy. The dog was beaten with the hand of its master. The rest of the life of the dog, even though the dog may be nine years old, every time someone raises a hand, the dog's going to do something. You know what the dog's going to do? Not going to run away. He's going to flinch. He's going to flinch. He's going to, something inside of him caused a fear or something to be broken that every time somebody raises a hand, the dog is going to react with that until the dog can heal or be broken or until that thing is completely removed or even the thought. There's always a sensitivity to an issue sometimes after the fact. And you have to be patient with people. But also the principle that causes those fears also causes our in our irritability. Abilities. The things that bothered us not so much in the past, after they affected us deeply, now still affect us. We wonder why things certain bother us. I used to wonder why my I knew a man who could not stand babies crying. I knew a man who couldn't stand babies crying. When I inquired further from the spouse of this husband, the spouse told me that the reason the man could not stand babies crying was not just because the sound of a baby crying but because this person used to be involved in satanism and they used to go to the church of satan where they would do where they would hear of torture to babies and children and when this person heard who was new to this church or at that time what they were doing it caused him great pain and suffering in his heart and mind just knowing those things existed so when the baby would cry, this person had an irritability that was beyond the normal person. This person had to deal with some of those issues. A lot of times, people may have an irritability to an issue that we have to be patient with others. And we also have to recognize of ourselves where those, inabil where those irritabilities, sensitivities come from. Now it says this, love is not irritable. And it's not resentful. Now, how do we get past this? Love takes kindness. Love takes those irritabilities. I look at this in two ways. Number one, we have to be able to recognize that other people are not at our levels. We also have to recognize that other people have irritabilities. And we also have to recognize those inabilities in us and love people past those things. And let God's love heal us of our own irritabilities. So I'm talking about two separate issues. One that is in your world and one recognizing it in others because you don't know what other people have gone through you don't know why people are the way they are we just sometimes are driving a car oh that idiot we don't know what they're going through what if they just got a phone call 
that their parents died. Maybe they're out of it. Are we giving leeway? Are we being loving and patient past others, past their inner irritabilities? Or are we just judging them because they are irritable? Things bother them. And now, going back to us, if we know that things are bothering us, that's inner, oh, things are always bothering us, we have to start searching and seeking those things out and loving because if we are going to be effective people in this world we cannot be showing everybody else how irritable we are we can't be that irritable we have to be loving to people oh you just bother me so what do you do you spew out poison oh you oh you just get on my nerves if you say in words like that you're speaking that over those people you're just allowing that irritability to come out inside you that's not love love doesn't act like that which means we need more love so we can be healed past those the dog that had the hand raised needs gentle healing. He needs the pet. He needs to know, hey, this hand doesn't mean wound against you. It instills trust. Love always trusts. Love always grows. But how does that happen? It happens because there's a healing that love does. Did you know how healing love is? Certain people who have been wounded in the past in a certain area have what is called a bruise. You don't know it hurts sometimes until someone presses that bruise and then it starts affecting you. We actually need so much love that we are able to heal past that bruise until the bruise no longer affects us and the bruise is completely healed. I heard a story of how in heaven they smell the leaves because the Bible says the leaves are for the healings of the nation. Somebody who visited uh, heaven, they saw everyone standing out smelling these leaves just nor near the gates of heaven. Near just the foyer entry of heaven. Before you get into all the fun stuff in the different cities and things like that. And seeing all the cool things and the different towns and places to explore in heaven. They were just standing there smelling the leaves for a long time. And the person said, why are they smelling the leaves? This is because the word says that the leaves are for the healing of the nation. There's a healing that has to happen on the inside before we're ready for even more love. Before people are able to get or meet your standards... And connect with you on the levels that you are connected. Before they can interact with your love, something needs to happen. There has to be a healing on the inside of people. And you know what can bring that healing? Love. You know what else can help bring that healing? Your smile. Your words. Jesus' is love inside of you reflecting someone else. Now we get complimented on our child. We get complimented on our, yeah. We get complimented on our child all the time. And I'm humbled by it. And I want to tell you something that happened the other day. We were at the store getting a, getting a drink. And there was a little coffee stand at, at the store and a drink. And while we were at the store, somebody came up and said, Wow. Oh, this lady said, Oh, your son. Wow, he's such a, he's such a beautiful baby. Oh, I just love this beautiful baby. Wow, look at him. He's got chunks for days. Look how junk he is. And I said, Do you want to hold him? And she looked at the mom, Melody, and she said, Melody said, yeah, do you want to hold him? And the lady said, no, what if I give him germs? And I said, he's, we're building up his natural immunity. So the more he's around people, that's going to be even better. Let him get strong. She was like, oh, are you serious? I, I would love to. I would really love to. I said, here, you hold him. So we took him out of the car seat and lift him up. And she hold him. And you know what she began to do? She, be, she cried. She was just tears just streaming down. The coffee shop people were looking at us like, wow, you let him hold? Let let's a stranger hold your child, this this old lady? And so this elderly lady was just holding the child and just streams just peering down. And I, she was like, I don't even know why I'm crying. I said, I said, because he's a soul and you're loving him. And that love for someone else releases healing in you. And he's loving you. Look at him smiling and laughing. And that love is healing you. And I told the lady this right there and there. And then, so we chatted and we fellowship for a bit. And then when she was done, she handed back our baby. And our baby, we put him back in the car seat. And she left and we left. And she didn't know that we were so far back. But we were pushing our cart to our car. And when we got there, this is what I said to her. I said, she looked back and I said, hey. And she said, I'm still crying. I'm still crying. And I said to her, Jesus loves you. Remember that. Jesus loves you. And she said, thank you. Thank you. And we walked to our car and uh, we got in. Now, there's a healing that happens when we love. And I want you guys to remember that. Let's finish this part. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It's not arrogant. 
It's not rude. It doesn't insist on always having things the way you want it. It doesn't insist on its own way. Okay? Irritable people are really notorious for having things the way they want it, right? I always try to do things a different way all the time. I try to eat a new meal. I try to drink a new drink. I try to go to a new place. I try to shake up things. I'm so shaked up because I noticed that when people have those particularities, it breeds pathological behavior. That is true. It's been found in books. If you're always just trying to do things your way, then other people start having to fit into your mold. Make excuses for people to be the way they are. Let you be flexible so you can love others. If you're not flexible and you're rigid and everybody has to fit into your mold, you'll be surprised that you clash with more personality types. But if you can be very fluid in your behavior, you can love people, you can always be what people need. As Paul says, I'm all things to all people. You can love a greater amount of people because you're not so stuck and people don't just have to meet your standards before you love them. Love is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And we'll stop there. Let's say a closing prayer. Father, we thank you for this, this great meeting that we had today. Thank you for our live call and our recap. And thank you for everybody who's listening to this word of God. And I pray that you would give us the courage and strength to love one another. Lord, I've been loving imperfect, Father, and I make a lot of mistakes, but you'll help me get better and better every day. Help us all to get better every single day, stronger and loving uh, the ways that you wish to be loved, uh, the ways that you need to be loved. Help us to love the way that you would love. You're the best example of love. Help us to, with our own irritabilities, heal us from our insensitivities, Lord. Heal us from our irritabilities. Use your love, Lord, to bring healing on the inside of our heart. And use us to love others past their own their own irritabilities. And help us to love others past their wounds and the things that bother them. I pray that you would help us to love other people in the way that they need to be loved, not just the way we wish to be loved. I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. May we praise you. We thank you. May you bless them. May you keep them. Make your face to shine upon them. Look upon them with favor. Be abounding to them with grace. Be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance towards them, Lord, and give them peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be back tomorrow. War Room, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm very excited. We're going to continue the book of Daniel, chapter number three. It's called Mysteries Revealed. It's the series that I'm preaching right now. So I'll see you guys there and Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Chart Room for Dive Tier members. Sign up on our website. It's $18 for the whole month. We'll be glad to see you guys there.